I wanted to create a video to explain how to determine if a molecule is aromatic or not. I'll be using the cyclopentadieno anion as my example. To start, I'd like to show a picture of the cyclopentadieno anion so you know what I'm talking about. Now, let's go through our checklist of requirements for aromaticity. Requirement number one, the molecule must be cyclic. Number two, the molecule must be planar. Number three, every atom in the ring must have a p orbital. Number four, the pi cloud must contain an odd number of pairs of pi electrons. Now let's go through each of these requirements one by one. Requirement number one, is the molecule cyclic? Well, the carbons in this molecule form a complete ring. So yes, this is a cyclic molecule. Thus we meet our first requirement. Requirement number two, is the molecule planar? Here we have to check the hybridization of the atoms in the ring. On first glance, it is apparent that the carbons with a double bond are sp2 hybridized, which would mean that they are flat and planar due to the trigonal planar geometry of the sp2 hybrid orbitals. We know that they are sp2 hybridized because they have a double bond. sp3 hybrid orbitals do not have a p orbital to form the necessary pi bond, and sp hybrid orbitals would have two p orbitals that are commonly found in the two pi bonds formed in a triple bond. The atom in question is the one at the very bottom, which is negatively charged and contains a lone pair. A carbon bonded to two sp2 hybridized carbons and contains a lone pair? Well, this reeks of resonance. And indeed, there are several resonance contributors, as shown here. All of the atoms in the ring are sp2 hybridized, and so we meet our second requirement. Requirement number three, all atoms in the ring must have a p orbital. In order to check this requirement, we need to check the hybridization of all of the carbons that form the ring. Oh wait, we've already done that. If all of our carbons in the ring are sp2 hybridized, this means that they all contain a p orbital. And thus we meet our third requirement. Requirement number four, there must be an odd number of pairs of pi electrons. In order to answer this, we need to count the number of pi electrons. To determine this, we can start by distributing our electrons within carbon's orbitals. We know that carbon has four valence electrons. Three of the electrons will be placed in the sp2 hybrid orbitals, which will then be used to form the three sigma bonds. And just to make things clear, I can use my mad Microsoft Paint skills to draw the hidden hydrogens. One sigma bond is formed with each of the two carbons that are adjacent to it, and one is formed to the hydrogen that it is bonded to. This leaves one electron to be placed in the p orbital to form a pi bond. This means that each of these four carbons, one, two, three, four, has one pi electron each for a total of four pi electrons. Now, the question is, what's going on with the carbon at the bottom? Well, normally carbon has four valence electrons, right? But this is the negatively charged anion. So now this carbon has five valence electrons. We can try distributing the five valence electrons in the orbitals, just like we did with the previous carbon. Again, we're going to distribute three of the electrons into the sp2 hybrid orbitals. These electrons will be used to form the sigma bonds. One sigma bond is formed for each of the two carbons that it is adjacent to, and one is used to form a bond with the hydrogen that it is bonded to. This leaves two electrons in the p orbital. So assuming that my math is correct, four pi electrons from the first four carbons plus two pi electrons from the bottom carbon makes for a total of six pi electrons. Six divided by two is equal to three, which is an odd number. And thus we meet our fourth and final requirement. Since we've met all four of our requirements, we can then conclude that this is an aromatic molecule. 